Aloha all, you've reached Samana with Unconventional Insights. This is my ninth episode and I'm entitling this Feeling Stuck. And to be honest, I was aware that I needed to do a podcast to be released Thursday at 8 a.m. as I committed to do so. And I have been in a stuck place for a couple of days. And I decided, talking to a friend, why not stay totally authentic, as I believe we should all be, and speak about that. There are so, this is such a common trait, a common place to be in as humans and the stresses and challenges that we face in life where we're on a path and we're directed forward and we have a plan and a goal and all of this is happening and we're doing everything it takes and we're not lazy and you just keep moving forward and then out of nowhere like one thing hits and another thing hits and then enough things hit that it stops you in your track and you're just wondering like what is happening here. Uh, And for me personally, it was actually like the words defeated came up and it was so intense and it started with a couple different things. I've been, for myself, I had an identity on an island for 30 years where I was known and when I would do workshops and various things and with clients and and students, I just just had to say Samana or say Spaluna and People knew and they knew my reputation and it wasn't hard to get people. And now I'm in a new area of Austin that nobody has a clue who I am. And and I'm learning that as I'm promoting these workshops that I've done for over 25 years and wondering how do I reach these people. So feeling that sense of defeat and what I realize with myself my patterns is that I tend to be because I've been a business person for so many decades that I tend to be task oriented so I have a list of things and I will continue to do it I will push 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 and just keep pushing through and I realize that that is what eventually causes the breakdown is that we're, in in spiritual terms, they have uh, the phrase over-efforting. So basically, for me, and it's an old pattern, so I saw it, is that I was over-efforting. I did more than my system, my being, my body, was able to do without breaking, without having to just stop at all. And then... With that breakdown, when you have this realization that you're kind of stopped in your tracks and this isn't working, then if we can look at the emotions that are happening underneath, because I instantly saw that in my material world, my my direction was stopped, but I have enough awareness as a life coach and as a meditator for all these years that I know I do my work even when I'm a Even when I'm in it, just like everybody else, I always have this this higher witness, let's say, that watches what's happening. So I needed to check in right away and say, okay, so what are the feelings underneath this now that I've stopped for a moment? And the feelings are that I'm doing the best I can and maybe I need help. And often when we get there, so I'm sharing through my own experience, that it is time that we need to ask people for help or even have someone to speak to, to just name what's happening, to just label, this is what's going on with me. And it's hard to move forward. Now, I have a philosophy that I don't believe in speaking negatively, And even about my own circumstance, like I'm a person, again, probably because I'm a silent meditator and that's my, my, uh, 
balance mode is that I like to feel what's going on or journal or something before because I believe in speaking the words out loud that we actually reinforce it. We reactivate it. We strengthen whatever's happening. So I prefer to wait until I'm to a point where I could start to see something. And in saying that, I don't mean to not share what's up for you, what's authentic for you. So I called a good friend of mine yesterday. I had just worked out. I had a good workout. I was doing everything I needed to support myself. And then I was going to go put up some flyers. And I find myself in the parking lot of this bakery, which had a place to put up flyers. And I got off the phone talking to her, and I, I couldn't stop crying. I mean, I actually couldn't stop crying to walk into this bakery. And I just sat there with that little self-hug that I was talking about with the inner child work, and, and just like, don't push yourself. Like, do the best you can. And people are sad, and people cry. So I just, you know, gently wiped my tears, and I went inside, and I ordered a small salad, and put up my flyers and just sat there and just kind of enjoyed the AC and and was just being kind to myself and not pushing myself. And I was aware of the woman waiting on me where I ordered the salad that just when someone's in that raw, vulnerable place, how people show up to you is so beautiful. And just her, it was as if like, I didn't have to say anything that was wrong, but she could see my vulnerability. And she was so gentle with just how, again, she kept it professional. It was all about what I was ordering and, and this is for you and, you know, okay, we'll serve you right away. And they brought it out like in record speed. I don't know if they did that (laughs) because it was slow. It didn't seem very slow, but it was just so beautiful to have that like distant stranger connection So it was there for that support. I was very much aware of that. So when I'm stuck, I don't shut down where I just go in a hole. Some people kind of go in a hole and isolate and, and they will just spin out in negative thinking. So I, I've done, I have enough life skills that I won't do that. Like I don't feel like going to a party or anything but I wasn't in a place that I wanted to hide because I know I want that connection. And I have my dogs, which I totally love my dogs, and they're always there. And any of you with pets know how much your dogs and cats and birds and mongoose or whatever you have, how much they're such a source of support and constants and just being there and being present and It's a beautiful thing, but there's more we have to do in those times of panic where we're just, what do I do now? So what I am discovering is even knowing all these life tools, challenges arise and we do get stuck or we do get stopped in our tracks And the difference is is between being totally thrown off balance and everything shuts down for months or forever, or for me, it was basically two days of just really feeling the underlying feelings of overwhelm, of feeling what are my boundaries? What are my limitations? Am I aware of my limitations? That's the other thing. I have a high expectation of myself, and I'm certain many of us do that, where we just, again, say yes, and we keep going forward, and I could do all of these things, and then we get to a point of reality, of checking in with our emotional body and saying, I can't go forward with this, or it has to go forward with adjustments. So, I went to, a good friend of mine invited me to this meetup this morning, and I haven't seen her in a few weeks, so I said yes, and and it was for uh, uh, women, networking women in business, and so I said, yeah, let's go. Like, I love being around a group of people, and women are wonderful, and this meetup in Austin was called Herdacity. H-E-R-D-A-C-I-T-Y dot org is their 
email, their website, if you wanted to check them out. And basically, they support women in various things. And it was very beautiful, the woman that spoke and the people in charge. It was just very lovely. And more so going around the room and hearing all these women. So there was a time that I believed in my immaturity, that going to a group like that would be a bunch of desperate people that all need work. And I realize now, because I've done several meetups and I'm in a different place in my life, that going to these meetups for different things, I've gone to writing meetups, I've gone to connection circle meetups, I've gone to uh, jazz meetups, I've gone to different things, and Austin definitely definitely has a lot of them, a lot of choices for you. Uh, my shamanic woman's circle, I love that one too, very, very much love that one. Anyways, um, but at the end, the most powerful part to me was all the women taking a moment to share their name and kind of what their experience is and what's going on, and I was speaking to my friend on the way home, like, I mean, many of them were in great jobs at uh, Dell or Google or these big corporations or their, you know, big uh, coaches and attorneys and, and many things. And I was fascinated that they took an hour and a half of their time out during rush hour traffic. Yes, that was fun to participate in that again. And to come and be in this little coffee shop in this little private room and, and share. And we all kind of squeezed in like sardines. But to be in a group setting of a, of a intentional focus is so uh, invigorating and it's so supportive and it's such an ease where my heart just just opens and it's like I could just live in circumstances like that and it's that question that why aren't I in community a lot more like this is about networking. The main woman was speaking and she says, because some women were saying around the room that they were introverts and, and they don't know how to network. And she made the comment, the speaker, that everybody knows how to network. Networking is friendship. It's just cultivating friendships. Some of our friendships are business friendships and connections. And some of our friendships become personal where you spend more time together. Um, I have many various connections that some of them are my students, some of them are clients, some of them are friends that we just talk to once in a while, some of them we talk all the time and we're there for each other. And and all of that is networking. It's a part of uh, community and sharing. But hearing a lot of these people in the room, various ages from 20s to 60s, 70s, um, that a lot of them are in a transition place that they're actually, they've had a certain mastery and career and focus and that they're finding right now at this point in life that they want to become more niche, become more specialized in something that really lights them up. And that was wonderful for me to hear because that's exactly where I am in my life. I have done so many things in life. I ran those biz three businesses in Maui for over 27 years. And so I've taught, I have life coached, I have been an esthetician, I've taught workshops, I've done so many things. I've been the principal of the schools, I've been the one who has to deal with state boards and all those. And I've done all of those different things, hiring, firing, training. And then I'm like, but what is it I really want to do? So for me, seeing throughout my life personally, and this is all part of this little two-day breakdown that I've had or, or, or feeling stuck that I've had, it was kind of like a pause button. Let's say it's more that because I, I is hard. Yesterday, it was very hard. It was the peak of it. And what I knew while I was in it was that this is the pattern I've learned. I learned this with clients when I'm helping them, and I know this personally, that no matter how much I feel like I'm suffering or how much it feels overwhelming or defeated, that in the moment that it's peaking and feeling unbearable, that what I know is the next day or soon, even later that day, that it's about to shift. That was the peak. That was the crisis point. And how I got to that crisis point was accepting that that's where I'm at. 
So, this is the process. We're stuck. We name that we're stuck and we stop. We put the pause button on. We no longer keep pushing and doing our physical activities. We just stop and we start to look and say, if we were to name what emotions are underneath, what would they be? And mine were a little vague at first. They were defeated. They were overwhelmed. Okay, so let's like refine those. And what are those? So there's a little anger in there and frustration. There's sadness in there and feeling lack of support or needing more resources or skills around me. And I'm sure there was fear in there, fear of failure, fear of can I go forward, fear of do I have what it takes to move forward and make these changes, this big shift in life of doing what I truly love and want. And connecting with my father, and there's my father, very, very supportive. We just have texts during the week, and we see each other on Sundays, and his text was, it's always challenging starting a new business. That's all he said to me. Basically, just accept where you're at, and that helped me even more so. Cry, yes, but it also got me to the next level after naming it, is that acceptance So the suffering comes in when we push, when we keep pushing, like I'm going to make this happen and I'm going to get an effect and because of this cause, yet I'm not seeing any effect. So that's where the suffering is. But as soon as I stop, I have enough awareness to stop and say, I'm accepting this. And it's actually the question is, what is this moment? So this is bringing a little spiritual practice in there is where you could acknowledge what is this moment, this exact moment. And in that moment is where I could feel the tightness in my core, in my stomach, in my throat, in my jaw, is where I could feel, it's almost in my heart as if I'm pushing forward, as if there's this urgency and I'm leaning forward more into it, um, in a, in a unhealthy way, in a pushing it way. So acknowledging that that's where I'm at. And then there I see I'm bringing tenderness in. I see it's time to bring compassion is in. I see that I'm not in a moment that I wished I was in, but I need to acknowledge this moment that I'm in. So many times, so the Buddha said, all suffering is due to our attachments. And it's our attachments to something being different than it is. It be it if a relationship is different than we wished it would be, or our relationship to ourself is different, the outcome of a project or work-related issues, if those are all different than we want it to be. And if we notice the suffering, then we're going to come back to, but what is it? Okay, With this in particular in my life, in this project, I need more skills or I need to find a different market. So when I allowed that acceptance in and feeling that vulnerability and that softness, under that, I decided, because I often do this, that I'm not going to do any more work the rest of the day. Like I did a little bit on one of my workshops and then I put that away and then the rest of the day I'm just going to get a little sun in back. I'm going to sit with my dogs. I'm going to meditate. So I meditated three times yesterday, which was very beautiful. The birds were singing more grand than usual. I was so appreciative of them. And But then I started seeing, okay, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to make a couple phone calls. I'm going to try this area. I'm going to look at different meetups. Perhaps I'm going to start a meetup where I could start bringing people to me in of like-mindedness. So it gave me ideas. So I saw that I went as far as I could in the direction I was going with the skills and resources I had, with the amount of energy I had, with my mindset. But what it also showed me is this this stuck, this breakdown, this pause button is a way of redirecting. And I get to reassess my priorities, see what my limitations are. And then the biggest question is really what is possible? 
And then we could do that, where we could write our little list down and say, I want to know what's possible here and what it, what is within my realm. So getting back to kind of the underlying feelings is so some people will say that's called shadow work, where you're identifying what is hidden or dark or repressed or that part that whatever we fear most, that's our shadow side. And another phrase, a little spiritual phrase to uplift, is it is is it said there's many, many poems and and teachings and writings and scriptures out there that basically the synopsis it says that our darkest moments show up and bring the greatest light. And with perseverance we move forward. So being excited at the same moment that we're aware of feeling stuck, that we're aware of whatever direction we are in a relationship, in a job, in a personal um, project, that this is symptomatic, that we need to pause and feel what's happening underneath. We're going to name it, feel what's happening underneath. We're going to accept that this is as far as I can go. And then we're going to start writing out a list about what, what is possible. Like that is my perseverance, enthusiastic perseverance. What is possible? So one of the things, so I woke up, as I said, a couple of days ago. Here's my stuck, and these are my go-to points. I'll give you my little exercises I do. So I always have to go to the gym, and I had a great workout. I had a 50-minute high-intensity training workout, so it was just nonstop. It was heaven, heaven, heaven. 126 crunches, lots of leg work. It was heaven, and I was focused. That's my meditation. I have my little, my little iPod on and listening to music I love and I didn't think about one thing so that is my meditation I'm breathing I'm aware of my heart that is my thing and as I said I meditated for 21 minutes three separate rounds outside where I could hear the birds I like hearing the sound and then I journal and this is my favorite journaling I'm sure I've mentioned this in other podcasts but in case I haven't my favorite journaling exercise that I learned many, many years ago from a beautiful Buddhist counselor. And this is a 10-minute practice that, so get a piece of paper out, set your phone for that 10 minutes. And this is when you're stuck and when negative thoughts are happening. So you sit there as soon as the timer starts and you think, what is the negative thought? And wait for it to arise. So mine instantly was I feel defeated. And what you write is its polar opposite. So you never write, so you notice the negative thought and you write the positive. So I saw the negative thought, I feel defeated. And I decided to write, I am being guided and directed in a new area that I haven't been familiar with up to this point, and I'm curious where it's going to take me and who is going to be involved in it. So I didn't know that was going to come until I saw the thought. So then I looked for more thoughts. I am in a process of reinventing myself. I am in a process of recreating a foundation that, again, regardless of our age, of our uh, financial circumstances, of our support system, if we live alone, if we live, if we're married and we have kids, if our kids are grown and moved out, if we have pets or not, whatever our environment is, so many friends, no friends at all, new area, been there for my whole life, we all go through these phases. And it's really about learning the tools First off, knowing it's part of life. Nothing, we didn't do anything wrong. We're not being punished. It's not our karma that created it. It's just, I, I believe in uh, this higher force, if you call it God or spirit or source, 
or your higher self, whatever it is that we're the, it's the center of all of us. And this higher source is very directive. And where we sometimes see things as a, as a, uh, uh, backtracking or as a stopping or as a failure, it really is the pause button to help us redirect and see where we want to go. So I'm grateful. I'm very, very grateful that my tools have shown me that within two days I was aware of the process. I named it. I accepted it. I allowed that sadness, that softening, that beautiful heavenly vulnerability my friend came over, was very, very just receptive and soft and receiving of me and just allowed me to be me and not have to be anything else. And that was a blessing in itself. And so back to an exercise, the song Happy by Pharrell Williams. I know, a little outdated for some of you millennials, but I tell you, often in front of a class or a workshop or even by myself, I'll tell Alexa to start playing it. And I use that as an instant reboot where I just start dancing to it, just free dancing, or, or you could bounce up and down like Tigger. That's another thing I've done with students and with clients where look at a clock for one minute and just bounce up and down. And basically that gets the lymphatic going, it gets the circulation and the cardio going. But that song, Happy, is such a joyous, I can't imagine anyone not liking that song. It's just a beautiful song. It just makes you smile. It makes you want to bop to it. It makes you want to move. It's just a fabulous reboot song to make you happy. So thank you, Farrell Williams, for your brilliance. And now I will say, bringing a little astrology into this, helping us with tools. So we are in the time of Virgo. And we are about to have, so the sun is in Virgo, and we are about to have a new moon in Virgo on Friday, August 30th. So every month we have a full moon and we have a new moon. So every, about every 30 day cycle here. So on a new moon, it is said, it is the best time to plant a seed of intention. And looking at the astrology sign that it's associated with, it kind of tells us what type of seed we should intentionally be planting this month. So for Virgo, with sun and moon, Virgo is all about purification, it's about cleansing, it's about details, lists, and Basically what Virgo is, some say they're critical and picky, and I say that it's removing all that is false, all that is no longer true in your life. So for the new moon on Friday, for any of you out there that want to write a list of your intentions of a practical nature that you would like to create over the next month or over till the end of the year. You could, even, you could even do it up to a year, but write your intentions in, in order of priority. And then the second column next to these lists of what you want to accomplish, start to write one to three steps of how you're going to accomplish that, just so that you just have a reference point. And then keep going back to that list and checking in and making certain that you're accomplishing something. The energy of Virgo likes to see accomplishment. I think the person who invented post-its was a Virgo because I wished I invented those and I love post-its. I have them all over my house because they're quick, they're small, and I write notes on it. And what I love most about lists and writing things down is when I get to cross it off. Like each week I write all of my appointments and my classes and my clients and what it's for and where I'm having like meetups or personal engagements and then even date night I put it all on my little post-its and then I love crossing it off it's just something about that checking it off that I feel a sense of accomplishment and it helps so much so little tips to share with you also I want to say that I'm going to do a plug for my workshops again. So I am doing two September 30-day cleanses. I personally am on day 25. I've been on this. 
and I'm going to, at 30 days, which Sunday I'm going to actually do my liver flush, my final liver flush, and then Monday I'm going to transition into some lighter eating, but maybe have eggs or something that I haven't been eating, and then I'm going to allow myself maybe a one week uh, where I'm not going to blow it, but just incorporate some things that I haven't allowed myself, and then I'm going to start it again with my class. So I'm doing an online class, so it's called uh, Cleanse Detox Spiritual Reboot because it's 30 days, and it's totally transformative. So the online class, if you don't want to come to South Austin, starts on Monday, September 9th, and it's from 10 to 1. It's going to be in a webinar um, format, and that will be for four Mondays in a row and that cost is $250. I do sell supplements that I give you a discount on if you want to do supplements, and I've had people do my cleanse without supplements, so this is eating in a certain way, and as soon as you sign up and register, I will email you exactly what the day looks like, and your shopping list, and what sorts of foods you're going to eat, and what not to eat, and it's very specific. The plus about doing it in a group is instead of paying a fortune for a life coach for the next month, you're basically only paying $250. My life coach fees, I charge $100 or two sessions for $150. So this you're getting 12 hours online or in-house of life coaching. And the webinar is taped for up to 48 hours afterwards, so you can, if you can't, like if you're working between 10 and 1 on Mondays, you could, after work, go and look at it, and it's going to. What I do each week is I'm going to do two hours of lecture where I'm actually going to talk about the processes of the liver, why we need a de detox, why the body needs to cleanse, and physiological things that are happening in the body, and certain ways of eating and foods just to educate you for the rest of your life, not just for this cleanse. And then in the Second and third weeks, we're going to get into talking about how the mind works, how we get into negative thought processes and uh, road rage and all those other things because of this toxicity that goes on with our thinking or our programming or our limited belief systems. And we're going to do some exercises, some written journaling exercises and some interactive where you could do this with a friend at home if you're online. In the in the class, we're going to uh, partner up amongst the participants, the ones that are here. And so you're going to get a lot of insight in that. And I'll give you, so again, a couple hours of information on how the mind works, why these things happen, and then exercises how to, uh, how to clear the mind, how to have clearer vision and clearer insights into things and memory improvement and all these great things. And because you're eating right and you're not incorporating any toxins over these 30 days, you're making a deep cellular shift in your body. The following week, we're going to get into emotional detox, and the book that I'm writing that I'm in the final editing of is all about this. So it's it's different emotions of the anger, sadness, and fear, and how to use it to, to your advantage, how we're doing it in negative ways, how we do it in positive ways, and how to process that properly. And be your best self and so many self-love tools. So we're going to do a check-in every week where people are going to share how they're feeling. If you have anything coming up specifically with side effects, and I'll talk about what all can be happening in a cleanse, you can continue to work. You can go forward in life. I would say up to the first five days to be a little gentler on yourself with physical demands or stressful demands if you can. Again, I've done these cleanses for so many years where I am still full on. Just be patient because sometimes as you're cleansing, your body just wants a little more rest time. So know that. And the other uh, workshop is going to be in-house in South Austin. I'm near Slaughter in South First, and that's going to be on Thursday nights. And I changed that date where we're uh, pushing it back one week, so we're going to start it on September 12th. So that's every Thursday at 6.30, 6.45. We'll start for three hours, and 
And in-house, I'm actually going to give you samples of the uh, alkaline broth soup and smoothies and some things that are all cleanse approved. And that one ends October 3rd, so you'll be looking and feeling exceptional by then. And I am here to support you through the whole thing as well as the other people taking the course. So please share this, tell somebody about it, and uh, if it feels like it's for you, let me know. And the last thing is, is that um, my co-host David Garrison and I were doing a relationship architect workshop for four weeks starting in October, on October 15th. That's going to be Tuesday evening, 6.45 to 9.45, and that is specifically for singles. So we have come up with designing a contract and I need to share a little personal thing here. So David and I have been doing a lot of um, time together to design this workshop that is different than other people have offered in Austin. We want it to be very uh, proactive and we're saying to design your design and create your ideal relationship and that's through self-reflection, through self-awareness. So, so we came up with this contract that I did and he added to it and then we said, okay, the last time we were together, let's both you and I do this contract and see how it lands and what happens, which I didn't even think that before he said that. So I started doing this. This is part of what caused my two-day shift <laughs> where I had the pause button come up because I want to say my own um, testimonial is those questions put me in such a deep place. I had to go in, in to such an authentic place that I haven't been uh, relationship-wise, I guess, to reflect on some things from the past, some old wounds, some various things to answer that as authentically and purely as I could. And it unearthed some things. And I told him, this is a, this is a damn good contract because it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. Because once we're there, once we like uncover mechanisms and distractions and chaos and things we're not happy with with other people and where we could bring it all home and own these things and really see that our only place of power comes from us acting from within in a direct, clear action. And the contract is going to bring that clarity. And by the end of the four-week course, we will promise that you will have such insight into what you really want, what you don't want, what to avoid, uh, and so many exercises that I wished we had more time each week, but we will give you homework because we are going to stuff you full of self-love tools and relationship tools for when you do start a new relationship. And I so want to hear from everyone telling us about your stories. This is going to be better than like match.com because we're going to have some really authentic relationships cultivated from this information. And I know that. So that is in October. We will teach that again. I'm not certain we don't have dates for that yet, but sometime next year. And uh, again, tell your friends if this sounds like something you're interested in. I could always be reached at Samana, S-A-M-A-N-A, -A -A, at Spaluna, S-P-A-L-U-N-A dot com. Or you could call or text 808-283-7587. Any questions you have towards workshops or upcoming classes, I have some esthetician workshops coming up in October, also on Mondays for microneedling, microdermabrasion, and for dermaplaning. And we'll see what else we have going. And thank you. It's been lovely spending this podcast with you. Please share with your friends and have a lovely day.